Alternative Therapies for Emotional Overeating Emotional overeating can make a person feel imprisoned, it can seem like there is no way out of the cycle of feeling sad, angry, anxious and so forth, and then eating to alleviate the emotional pain. There are treatments that are available, though, some of them conventional and some of them alternative. Conventional therapy, surgery, and medication have all been utilized at one time or another for the treatment of emotional overeating. There are, however, some alternative therapies that are worth exploring. Here are some of them. Hypnosis. Because emotional overeating begins in the mind, hypnosis is said to be effective because it addresses the mind directly with the power of suggestion. Hypnosis is not the mumbo-jumbo stuff of cartoons and swinging pocket watches, it's a clinical practice and many practitioners have used it with success to treat emotional overeating. Meditation. The intent of meditation as a treatment for emotional overeating is to tune in to the emotional thought center that is driving your cravings and or binge eating. Meditation, sometimes taking a form called mindfulness, is the opposite of mindlessness, which is what often happens in emotional overeating. The person does not really think about what he or she is doing, it's mindless eating. Herbal supplements. It seems like every time you turn around there's a new herbal supplement promising to help you lose weight. But there are some herbs that can help with the issue of emotional overeating. Here are some of them. Asterisk Hudia. This much publicized herb is said to be effective at appetite suppression and boosting energy. Its effects tend to be subtle, and it also has a good safety record. Asterisk Vitex. This hormone balancing herb for women may help those whose emotional overeating is influenced by hormone fluctuations. Asterisk ginseng. This ancient herb is said to help sugar cravings and curb the compulsion to overeat in response to one's emotions. Both American and Asian ginseng are purported to be equally effective. Acupuncture. Acupuncturists are often asked if acupuncture can help with weight loss. The answer, in general, is yes, but not always. However, the good news is that acupuncture tends to be more successful with treating emotional overeating than just overeating. This may be due to acupuncture's alleged ability to release endorphins and boost metabolism, making the client feel better emotionally, effectively curtailing the emotional overeating. Nutrition. Interestingly, having the right balance of vitamins and minerals may affect emotional overeating, it's not too much of a stretch to speculate that nutritional deficiencies could play a part in this kind of overeating. So make sure you're not eating a lot of artificial, processed, pre-packaged foods. Opt for fresh, whole foods as a general rule. It's also a good idea to take a vitamin and mineral supplement that is formulated for your gender and life situation. Could you have an eating disorder? Do you find yourself gaining weight during times of stress? Do you fear boredom because you know you'll simply eat to fill the time? These are just some of the symptoms of emotional overeating. If you think you may suffer from this relatively common eating disorder, here are some signs and symptoms that may help you identify whether or not this is what you're struggling with. Mindless eating. If you have a binge eating disorder or emotional overeating problem, you may stuff food in and not even really taste it or realize what you're doing. It's as though you are, out of it, and just mindlessly stuffing food into your mouth. Feelings of guilt and shame. Many people with emotional overeating disorders feel really embarrassed and hateful of themselves after they've got through with an eating binge. The problem, of course, is that these negative feelings may make you reach for more food for comfort. Eating in secret. Because of being embarrassed, may emotional overeaters will eat in private, reserving their naughty foods for when no one is looking. Always on my mind. Do you think about food all the time? Do you feel anxious about the prospect of leaving the house without snacks or money to buy food? Constantly thinking about food, food obsession, may be a sign that you have an emotional overeating disorder. Feeling sick. Sometimes, emotional overeaters will eat and eat to comfort themselves, and then feel sick afterward. Obviously, this is your body's way of telling you you've eaten far too much more than is good for you. But for emotional overeaters, this sickness does not necessarily deter the next binge. Identify your triggers. Emotional overeating is usually triggered by something, emotions, yes, but sometimes we need to be more specific than that. 
Identifying your personal triggers can go a long way toward helping you overcome the disorder. Basic trigger categories include Asterisk emotional, eating to relieve boredom, stress, or anxiety. Asterisk psychological, you may eat in response to negative, self-destructive thoughts. Asterisk environmental, situational, you may eat simply because the opportunity is there. Also in this category is the habit of eating while doing another activity, such as reading or watching TV. Do any of these signs and symptoms describe you? If so, don't despair, there are treatment options available for emotional overeaters. Check with your healthcare provider for advice on therapists or specialists in your area. How to eat to stop emotional overeating. When you think of stopping emotional overeating, does it seem like an impossible goal? You're not alone. Many people who suffer from this problem feel imprisoned and helpless. It can seem like you are unable to break free from the overwhelming emotions and habits. But there's good news, it's a treatable problem. Being honest with yourself is an important first step. Emotional overeaters tend to judge themselves pretty harshly, but don't, you're not an isolated case or some kind of freak. It's a sign of strength to seek help. It means you've identified the problem. If you're struggling with this problem, there are some things you can do to get things under control while you're seeking professional help. Here are some tips. Your grocery list. When an emotional moment hits and you head for the refrigerator or pantry, what kind of foods do you usually go for? Often, emotional overeaters head for high-calorie comfort foods like ice cream, chips, or candy bars. But you can't eat those things if they are not in your house. Here are some examples of foods to put on your grocery list in place of the ones you may be tempted to buy. Another tip, buy only the foods on your list. Compulsive buying of food is tempting. Asterisk brown rice instead of white rice asterisk millet instead of or in addition to rice asterisk fresh fruits and vegetables rather than canned asterisk low fat low calorie yogurt rather than ice cream asterisk popcorn kernels for air popping rather than chips and fatty snacks asterisk lean protein like fish turkey and chicken instead of deli meats and processed meats like hot dogs and bologna asterisk natural healthy cooking oils like olive and safflower oil instead of shortening lard or unhealthy oils don't crash diet it's good to be proactive in solving problems and emotional eating is no exception if you try to crash diet you may find yourself eating more after the crash diet is over so rather than stopping eating everything you love Try some of these tips. Asterisk allow yourself to have a dish of frozen yogurt each week as a treat. This approach tends to be easier than just cutting out all frozen treats. You could use this approach with other, naughty, foods. Two, it may be easier to resist if you know you are going to have that food on Saturday or whatever day of the week you choose to have a small treat. Asterisk boost your nutrition with a good quality vitamin and mineral supplement. Asterisk increase your consumption of nutrient-dense foods. Eat regular meals. Experts recommend regular mealtimes as a way to combat emotional overeating. If it's not time for food, then you may be better able to hold off on eating until it is time. Also, eating regular meals helps you to be deliberate about your intake of nutritious foods. And finally, having regular mealtimes tends to make for a more relaxed eating experience, which is the direct opposite of anxiety-driven overeating. Lifestyle Choices – Learn to Overcome Emotional Overeating Overcoming emotional overeating can seem overwhelming, and setbacks can be expected. But the good news is, there are lifestyle choices that you can make to help overcome this problem. The key word is choice, you can choose to follow a healthy lifestyle. Sometimes it helps to break things down into small, specific steps you can take, just trying to lead a healthier lifestyle is a bit vague. Following are some of these specifics. And remember, setbacks and relapses are not unusual. Don't beat yourself up, just start fresh tomorrow. Exercise. Experts are in general agreement that regular exercise three to five days a week is most beneficial. This exercise should consist of at least 20 minutes of cardiovascular exercise, such as vigorous walking, jogging, biking, etc., followed by some light toning or weight training. Committing to this regimen full force is not necessarily the best way to go, 
If you can only exercise once or twice a week, that's still better than nothing and will hopefully pave the way for more in the future. Exercise is said to relieve emotional overeating in several ways. For one, exercise produces endorphins which are the body's natural, feel-good, hormones. For another, exercise prevents boredom and mindless eating, which is what you might be doing if you weren't exercising. And finally, exercise will likely boost your self-image, helping to break the cycle of low self-esteem and poor self-image that feeds emotional overeating disorder. Nature. Never underestimate the healing power of nature. For those with emotional overeating disorder, choosing to spend more time out in nature can be particularly beneficial. After all, in the natural realm there are no media messages to mess with your self-image, and being in nature connects you to your origins and the origins of food. Some experts theorize that detachment from food and its natural source plays a role in emotional overeating disorder. Getting involved in nature and exploring and appreciating it can go a long way toward reconnecting with our biologically normal view of food. Maybe you can kill two birds with one stone and do your regular exercise outdoors. Nutritional Treatments for Emotional Overeating It may seem ironic to turn to nutritional treatments for emotional overeating, after all, isn't the problem too much eating? Why would you want to look at more foods you need to eat? But more and more experts are seeing the connection between nutrition and emotional overeating. The fact is, when you overeat in response to emotions, you may not be eating the healthiest foods. You become full, even sick, on junk foods, and there's no room left for the good stuff. It's common knowledge that you do need the right nutrients to be healthy, and if those foods are not being eaten, then it's more a matter of quality than quantity. Nutritional Deficiencies Another aspect of emotional overeating may be nutritional deficiencies, and the deficiencies might bring on cravings. The theory is that the body craves certain foods in response to a need, in the case of emotional overeating, the need is emotional but it may also be physical. For example, a craving for ice cream may signify your body's need for calcium. Here are some vitamins and minerals that, according to research, are implicated in the management of emotional overeating. Hashtag vitamin D. This vitamin's effect on mood is well documented, and is even suggested for people who suffer from certain depressive disorders, such as seasonal affective disorder. Foods high in vitamin D include asterisk cod liver oil asterisk sockeye salmon asterisk soy milk, fortified with vitamin D, asterisk cow's milk. Remember that vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, so sources with healthy fats, such as fish, may be absorbed better by the body. Hashtag B-complex vitamins. These important vitamins help increase energy levels and manage water retention. Foods with B vitamins include Asterisk yogurt asterisk eggs asterisk lean beef B12 asterisk dark leafy greens kale broccoli spinach Hashtag magnesium and calcium This is a powerful pair many supplements put them together in one pill or capsule These minerals are important for managing muscle and nerve tension Interestingly when these minerals occur naturally in foods there is usually a higher proportion of magnesium to calcium whereas supplements generally have more calcium than magnesium. Foods include asterisk beans asterisk nuts, especially peanuts, hazelnuts, and pecans asterisk corn. Hashtag zinc. Zinc has been shown to have a profound effect on appetite and cravings, and many people with eating disorders are deficient in this mineral. Zinc is found in the following foods. Asterisk shellfish, especially oysters and crab asterisk beef, particularly beef shanks asterisk pork asterisk chicken asterisk garbanzo beans. Making deliberate, conscious choices about what you do eat can go a long way toward managing emotional overeating. Plan your meals and make a shopping list, and be proactive about meeting your nutritional needs. Tips on overcoming emotional overeating. Emotional overeating is almost a joke in our society, movies, TV shows, and the resulting stereotypes cause many of us to laugh about how much ice cream it takes to get over a boyfriend, or how much chocolate we need to overcome rejection. But for those who actually suffer from emotional overeating, it's anything but funny. First, it helps to be honest with yourself and identify if you have this problem or not. 
Here are some tips to help you know if you are an emotional overeater or not. 1. Keep a food diary. In this diary, in addition to noting everything you eat, also note how you feel when you eat, sad, angry, upset, elated, joyful, etc. Don't judge yourself or make any changes to your habits when you begin keeping this diary, you're not trying to impress anyone or prove anything. You are trying to get an honest picture of your eating habits. After several weeks, a pattern will probably emerge. 2. Are you under a lot of stress? Do you find that you gain weight when under stress? There are other factors that can come into play, of course, causing you to gain weight. But this is something to consider if you are trying to figure out if you have an emotional overeating problem or not. 3. Get advice from a therapist or specialist if you really want to find out if you are a victim of emotional overeating. How can it be overcome? If you have identified emotional overeating as something you suffer from, you may benefit from some tips on overcoming this problem. Here are some to consider. 1. Seek stress relief. If you overeat in response to stress, it makes sense to find alternative ways to relieve and manage that stress. Meditation, yoga, pilates, martial arts, and other regular forms of exercise and relaxation techniques can help alleviate the stress that is triggering your overeating. 2. Swap goodies for goodies. Try to find substitutions for the comfort foods or food rewards you seek when you are feeling positive or negative emotions. Having something in place already is key, keep a list handy or other reminder that will prompt you to turn to the alternative rather than the candy bar. Some alone time, a short walk, reading a magazine or book for pleasure, doing your nails, etc. are all little emotional pick-me-ups that you can implement in place of food. 3. Why am I doing this? Before eating, ask yourself why you are doing it. Do you feel genuinely hungry? If you're truly hungry, you may feel fatigued and, of course, feel hunger in your stomach. Ask yourself if you really feel hungry or if you are seeking an energy boost or a calming effect instead. Could your weight gain be the result of emotional overeating? Weight gain is frustrating enough, but when you can't seem to identify the causes of it, the frustration is compounded. Emotional overeating is a somewhat sneaky problem, because it can involve mindless eating, it's the sort of thing that can occur without you realizing it. If you are having trouble figuring out what's causing your weight gain, here are some tips on identifying emotional overeating, as opposed to just overeating. Seemingly unexplainable weight gain. If you are gaining weight and you can't seem to figure out why, this is, ironically, a sign that the problem may lie with emotional overeating. As noted above, you often don't know you're doing it when it comes to emotional overeating. You may even be working out regularly and preparing healthy meals and still gaining weight, because you are mindlessly eating other foods when you feel negative emotions. A sudden urge. Sources say that emotional hunger comes on quite suddenly, perhaps in the form of an irresistible craving for a certain food or just the urge to eat right now. True hunger is usually more gradual than that, Unless you have low blood sugar or have gone a very long time without eating, true hunger does not usually take the form of an urgent need to eat a whole lot right away. Depression. More and more the connection between emotional overeating and depression is being discovered. Do you feel depressed periodically? When you even think of feeling depressed, what goes through your mind? How do you cope? If you are picturing a big serving of your favorite comfort food, then this may be a sign that your overeating is emotion-based. Stress. Are you going through a stressful time in your life simultaneous to your weight gain? Have you seen that pattern before? Stress, with its accompanying anxiety and other negative feelings, can trigger someone to overeat in response to those feelings. Guilt. How do you feel after you eat? Are you consumed with guilt? Do you feel ashamed? These feelings are signs that you have a problem with emotional overeating. Normal eating to satisfy normal hunger does not make a person feel guilty. Specific cravings. As many parents know, genuine hunger usually means that you're more open to various food options. In emotional overeating, though, cravings may be so specific that no other food will do to satisfy your hunger. You feel like you have to have that particular food to feel satisfied. Weight loss surgery, can it help with emotional overeating? 
If you have trouble with emotional overeating, you may have considered weight loss surgery of some sort. But how do you know if it's for you? What kinds of surgery options are available? Here are some ideas as to the more common surgical options currently available and some of the better known pros and cons associated with them. 1. Lap band. This is a type of restrictive weight loss surgery, and it is adjustable. A silicon donut or ring is placed around the top of the stomach, leaving a small pouch above the ring. This is where the food goes first, and the pouch, being so small, fills up quickly. The person feels full on less food, in other words. Slowly, the food makes its way from the pouch into the main stomach. The doctor or surgeon may, from time to time, inject saline into the ring in order to inflate it, thus decreasing the pouch's capacity even further. The opposite can be done as well. Pros. Asterisk it's adjustable, as noted above, fluid can be removed or injected into the ring. Asterisk the digestive process is not compromised, food is digested, the usual way. Asterisk the surgical procedure is usually done laparoscopically, meaning it's minimally invasive. Cons. Asterisk additional surgery may be required in the case of twisting of the access port or perforation of the stomach. Asterisk weight loss tends to be rather slow and gradual, and not as dramatic as some other options. Asterisk repeated follow-up visits with your doctor are required. 2. Gastric bypass. This is what's known as a malabsorptive technique. In gastric bypass surgery, a small pouch is created at the top of the stomach using staples, rather than a ring. Then part of the small intestine is rerouted to connect to this pouch, essentially creating a permanently smaller stomach. It is called bypass surgery because food bypasses the rest of the stomach and the original small intestine connection, called the duodenum. Pros. Asterisk weight loss tends to be significant and permanent. Asterisk mild side effects, such as heartburn, tend to be resolved easily. Cons. Asterisk compromised nutrient absorption is a significant concern, and patients are generally required to take many supplements to prevent nutritional deficiency. Asterisk dumping syndrome, or a too fast emptying of stomach contents, is a potentially difficult side effect. Asterisk it's harder for doctors to view the stomach and intestine via endoscopy, meaning cancer and other problems may go undetected. These are just two of the more common types of weight loss surgery. The bottom line is, weight loss surgery can help with the weight gain and excessive caloric intake associated with emotional overeating, but it does not address the underlying emotional issues. If you do choose some sort of surgery to treat emotional overeating, it's a good idea to make sure it's part of a whole person treatment plan that includes counseling and emotional therapy. What causes emotional overeating disorder? Emotional overeating disorders can be difficult and devastating for those who suffer from them. What makes this happen? Why is it that some people, knowingly or unknowingly, turn to food for comfort? Here are some thoughts and ideas on those questions. Emotional overeating disorder is a general term that refers to any of various eating habits where genuine hunger is not the motivational factor. It is more common among women than men, but men are not immune, especially young men in their teens and twenties. Those who suffer from this disorder associate food with emotional comfort, and will turn to eating to escape negative feelings. Past Trauma For some with emotional overeating disorder, the problem stems from past traumatic events. Someone who suffered sexual abuse, for example, or some other kind of sexual trauma may overeat in response to feelings of anxiety and confusion. The result is a fatter body, which some sources suggest may cause the sufferer to feel protected from being attractive to the opposite sex. Subconsciously or consciously, the sufferer wants to be unattractive. Other examples of past trauma or unmet needs may cause a person to turn to emotional overeating. Poor self-image. People who suffer from low self-esteem and a negative self-image may seek escape by overeating. In a way, emotional overeating is a physical expression of what the sufferer feels inside, and the resulting weight projects the same image of self-disrespect. Self-medication. Like alcoholics, those who struggle with emotional overeating may be unconsciously using food as a drug. Eating numbs or dulls the emotions that might be too hard to deal with otherwise. 
Depression. Studies indicate a strong correlation between depression and emotional overeating. Ironically, sometimes as depression grows worse a sufferer loses weight. Weight loss means the sufferer is not eating as much, and therefore not engaging in his or her coping mechanism. Stress. Prolonged, unrelieved stress can have a profound effect on the body. Stress stimulates the body to produce, among other chemicals, the hormone cortisol. Cortisol apparently has a hunger-stimulating effect, and as the stressful emotions increase along with the cortisol, a cycle of emotional eating can play out. Individual Triggers There are triggers or causes of emotional overeating that are not necessarily in the categories above. Some examples might be Asterisk boredom asterisk oral need or a need to satisfy your mouth's need to do something asterisk social pressure or embarrassment at eating in public, resulting in overeating in private asterisk financial stress asterisk relationship difficulties. Emotional overeating. Knowing where to turn. Emotional overeating can seem like a prison with no way out, and when you do think of seeking treatment, it can seem too overwhelming to consider. Sometimes it helps to have some simple steps and treatment programs laid out clearly, so it doesn't seem so overwhelming. Following is a list of common treatment options for emotional overeating disorder, as well as some tips on things you can do and some cautions on what not to do. Common treatments. First, recognize your problem. No you're not alone. The number of people who suffer from emotional overeating disorder is significant. Asterisk counseling, individual, group, or family counseling can prove very helpful for people who experience emotional overeating. Counseling treatment usually involves some nutritional and dietary guidelines and treatment of underlying emotional problems. Asterisk surgery, this is a somewhat controversial treatment for emotional overeating, it addresses the physical aspect of the problem rather than the emotional. However, in combination with emotional therapy and extensive medical counseling, Surgery is a viable choice for some sufferers. Usually, surgical options involve decreasing the space available in the stomach, usually by a lap band or gastric bypass procedure. Asterisk medication, under the care of a professional, medications, usually antidepressants, have been shown to provide relief for many who suffer from emotional overeating. This may be due to the suspected connection between overeating and depression, Research continues to point to the relationship between the two problems. Tips, what you can do. Asterisk exercise regularly, yes, you've heard this one, but it's really an important aspect of managing emotional overeating. Exercise may improve mood, improve energy levels, and increase your self-image, all part of overcoming emotional overeating. You can start with just 20 minutes of brisk walking three to six times a week. Asterisk eat well. What you do eat is as important as what you're, not allowed, to eat. Sometimes, emotional overeaters can be overcome by cravings for certain, forbidden, foods, like ice cream, candy bars, and potato chips. But if you're full of and surrounded by healthy foods, you can dig in without feeling guilty. Keep fresh produce on hand and eat lots of lean protein, veggies, fruits, and whole grains. What not to do? Asterisk keep unhealthy snacks handy, if you don't have the unhealthy food in the house, you will probably be less likely to head for it in times of emotional distress. In other words, make it hard on yourself to get the foods you want to eat when feeling bad, cross ice cream, junk foods, and fatty snacks off your grocery list. Asterisk crash diet, trying to starve yourself or go on an extended fast is not recommended. You may compromise yourself nutritionally and or physically, and crash dieting tends to result in more overeating afterward.